Now we come to the secret ingredient that I mentioned to you. Uh, Peterson calls for these chipotle peppers in adobo sauce. And I didn't know what that was until I made this recipe. And I'll tell you, it makes the dish. It is absolutely delicious. But there are a few precautions that you have to do when you're using these types of peppers. And I'll show you that in just one moment. Okay, these are the chipotle peppers, and that is the adobo sauce. Now, the thing that you have to be cautious about these is, and this is kind of a little bit unintuitive, but you got to think about this. Um, you want to cut them in half, and then I like to put them in some kind of a strainer. And we're going to take these over to the sink and we're going to be very careful to work out all of the seeds because the seeds are very hot. And even when you take them out, the final sauce is going to be hot. If you want to have it super hot, you can leave a few seeds in. But mostly, you want to get rid of all of these seeds. And there's a kind of a two or three step process here that I'll walk you through. Because the first time I made these, I screwed up a little bit. Still tasted good, but there's some tricks that you can avoid the mistakes of the dude and learn from the dude. Okay, so there we have these nice peppers all chopped in half. Let's take them over to the sink. Here are the peppers that I've chopped in half. And I'm going to now spend quite a bit of time uh, Rinsing off each of the peppers, one of the easiest <coughs> ways to um, get all those seeds out of there is to take each of the pepper halves and just rinse it by hand and then transfer the pepper itself to another strainer. And again, you may have to go back and do this a couple of times. But it is so important to get those nasty little seeds out of there because they are potent, but they're also the source of all that wonderful flavor that you wouldn't get without them. Okay, I'm rinsing now for the second or third time in another strainer, and I've got it down to where I've got most of the peppers transferred over, but if you look real carefully in there, you'll see and I still have a few seeds at the bottom, so I'm glad I did this more than once. Take a look at that. There's a little nasty seeds in there. Don't want to lose any of those wonderful peppers either, so I'll just keep digging them out and transferring them over. There's probably a thousand seeds in the original a lot, and now we're down to just a few dozen, it looks like. And uh, we can put them down the old drain here. I don't know if my worms would appreciate getting seeds that hot. So we will have to send these things to the sewer. And here we go. As I'm looking through this now, I don't see any seeds left. And that's my objective. So now the remainder of these peppers is what we're after. This is where the flavor is. And the next step is I'm going to dump the remaining peppers out. You can see they're kind of like a, a mushy bunch of stuff. And now the secret here that I failed to do last time adequately is you really got to chop these suckers fine. And you want to chop these things as fine as they can go because even the smallest piece of these peppers is going to be really hot. Now let's see, this love hot stuff. Really hot stuff, I mean. Lip burning hot stuff. Uh, you're not going to appreciate that. So the way to get this wonderful flavor dispersed throughout your salsa is to really mince these puppies. Mince them to where they come out all well, like minced, like that. Let's give a few, a few little pieces of pepper left. So we're going to chop on down. And that looks pretty good. So now we're going to pull these puppies in here. Getting near the end now, and this was the most important step, probably, was to get these chipotles nice and finely chopped. Get them mixed in. Oh my gosh, 
you really can't imagine how good this is. But there's one more ingredient that we need to add that will finish it off. So let's go and get the final thing to make this perfect. The final ingredient is, of course, a little tiny bit of fresh cilantro. Maybe two tablespoons full. So here I've got my new garden patch of cilantro going and we'll take a little tiny bit of that out and now bring it back in. And there we have the uh, freshly cut cilantro which I always like to rinse just because uh, there may have been some little bugs or dirt or something in the garden. Rinse that out, let it dry out a little bit. Plop it down the old cutting board. Get the old knife out. Chop that stuff up. And this just adds that lovely, lovely, rich cilantro flavor. Notice I'm not scraping these things up so that they will dull the blade. <clears throat> And voila, there we have it. The final ingredient placed in this wonderful salsa. The salsa now can be stored for two or three days in the refrigerator. And it makes a really good prelude to any kind of a Mexican dinner. It goes wonderful with chips. And there you have it, folks. That is simply wonderful. So here you have it. This is about as good salsa as you're ever going to find anywhere. And of course the proof is always in the eating. So I'm going to take a sample here of this first bit and... Mm. Oh God. Mm. Excuse me while my brains fall out. Mm. Mm. That is undoubtedly the best salsa in the world. Please try it. You will not be sorry. Love you like a fresh vegetable. So tell me if you love Tony Rebel. Me love you like a fresh vegetable. So tell me if you love Tony Rebel. Because you want to let me a roll me, you want me to say don't love you, the two and we are one go. I me love you, girl, and me can't get to my dress, so make me tell you something when you want to know. Love you like vegetable, so tell me if you love Tony Rebel. I me love you like a fresh vegetable, so tell me if you love Tony Rebel. Watch me now, so if it is no, I see them don't say so. But if it is, yes, I want you say we the best. So tell me if you love the Tony River Love your life, fresh vegetable So tell me if you love Tony